Good morning, everyone. The Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen once said, Everyone else who was ever born into the world came into it to live. Our Lord came into it to die. Death was the crown to the life of Christ. The road to that death, the road to his passion, death, and resurrection begins now, today, with Palm Sunday. It began with that procession, that procession into Jerusalem, and that procession on a mount that seemed rather odd. Why did our Lord choose a donkey? Why is a donkey the very vehicle, if you will, that he rode into Jerusalem to begin the first Holy Week? To head toward Calvary. Why would he choose such a strange animal? The choice of a donkey seems odd, doesn't it? Now maybe I'm showing a bit of bias here, but I think donkeys are pretty ugly. They're stubborn. And believe it or not, they are a bit smelly. Why would he not choose a majestic horse? No, but a donkey. It seems to me, though, that if we interpret this correctly, we'll understand exactly what our Lord is saying through his passion and death. His choice of a donkey was no accident. It was a choice to communicate to us clearly about why he was going to die. If we read the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, we know that the prophet predicts the coming of a Messiah. And he says that that Messiah will enter on a donkey, a noble mount. Indeed, the Lord fulfills that prophecy. He's communicating to the people of his time and to us that he's coming as a king to rule and to reign. A king not of power, not of prestige, not of riches, but a king of suffering and of mercy. A king of the cross. Jesus comes to reign precisely through the humility of his suffering and death. The donkey means kingship. But the donkey also means humility. He enters into Jerusalem not on a glorious mount, but on a humble one. There's a beautiful poem by G.K. Chesterton about a donkey. And I'd like to read just a few verses to you. Chesterton first portrays this donkey in a very humble way when he says, With monstrous head and sickening cry and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody on all four-footed things. Indeed, this donkey does seem to have a monstrous head, a sickening cry, ears like errant wings. Yet Chesterton goes on to say, Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my ears, and palms before my feet. You see, the donkey did have its hour. The hour in which, in his humility, was brought to great glory. An hour in which he had an opportunity, despite his monstrous head and sickening cry and, and ears that looked like errant wings, despite all of this, he was the very mount upon which our Savior began the passion, began our salvation. Jesus comes to us in humility on a humble beast of burden to proclaim to us 
that this week is about salvation and not by a savior who's a military leader, not by a savior who is a powerful government official, but by a savior who accepts humbly the cross. And so now, my brothers and sisters, we turn from the procession, we turn from the reading of the Passion toward the altar. Just as Holy Week will proceed through, through, through several days and we will come to the institution of the Eucharist, so we will now turn to the altar at this Mass as we do at every Mass and see our Lord once again tell us that he is King and a humble King. At every Eucharist, we hear the same message and have communicated to us the same revelation. God wishes to reign in our hearts through humility. Our journey at the Mass started at the baptismal font. It went to the ambo, and now it goes to the altar. And from that altar, we will receive the same person that crowd received on that first Palm Sunday, our humble King. May, he, may we welcome him as they did with great Hosanna.